Many inner city youth see the NBA as their ticket out of poverty. With the days of skipping college to play professional basketball over, a high school player's best bet is to get into a Division I college. It is driven into most of these kids' heads that making it into the NBA is the only chance that they have for success in life. But no matter how skilled they are, the odds are still extremely high that they won't make it. My name is Arthur Agee, and I'm one of those who did not make it. The film Hoop Dreams shows the journey of trying to make my dream of professional basketball come true. I was born and raised in Chicago, on the west side. Some of the best players in the game came from these streets. 1991 was my senior year at Marshall High School. Our team reached the state tournament where we finished in third place. I was on top of the world. No one could tell me I wasn't on my way to the NBA. Sixteen years ago, I was one of those kids who saw basketball as my ticket out of the ghetto. The movie changed my life, labeling me forever Arthur A.G. from Hoop Dreams. I used my basketball skills to make it into Mino Area Junior College. I received an athletic scholarship to a major Division I school, Arkansas State University. Then I played for various semi-professional teams, such as the Winnipeg Cyclones, the Florida Sharks, and the Fargo Bees. I thought I did everything I was supposed to do to fulfill my dreams, but soon realized that I would not be making it to the NBA. I hadn't been around my old high school marshal for a while, you know, just keeping to myself and laying low. Then a few people close to the basketball program told me there was a player there that reminded them of me. At first, I didn't think too much about it. But one day I decided I'd check it out for myself. And that's when I met and became friends with Patrick Beverly. What are you doing today? Uh, you know I got all the clippers, right? I know. So look, I'm gonna make this white t-shirt with all the like all the headlines. Like, <laughs> it's funny. Just as my hoop dream had passed, his was just beginning. I mean, seriously, this boy could ball. <laughs> When you're a little kid, I don't think you think about the NBA, but you don't think about what you need to work at to get to the NBA. They're looking at you in the sixth, seventh, eighth grade saying this guy is going to be a future NBA player. It's ridiculous. You don't know what kind of grades he's going to get. You don't know how if he's going to grow anymore. He might not grow. Uh, he could get injured. You know, you could be the best player in the world in the seventh grade. It just don't matter. Who cares? I really didn't see myself playing college basketball, that's honest. I mean, when I was thinking about basketball, the only thing I was thinking about was the NBA. And I kind of forgot about what you're going to do out of high school. You can get so much out of this game if you do it right. If you study, you can get a free education worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can learn how to be a man. You can learn how to be an adult. You can grow up in this, in this game and use this game to benefit you. It doesn't, it's not about the NBA. When you get into the, the junior highs, well, the high school, junior highs, even the grade schools, you're not giving uh, these kids a chance to just have fun. You go out and recruit kids at that age, it's business. Uh, the role of high school basketball in Chicago has a lot to do with the identity of the neighborhood. In the past, there's been more NBA players from the south side. Then there's the west side, which is grittier and a little bit more hardcore, and those players are thought of as tougher. And lately, they've had more success in the NBA and such than the Southside players. Patrick Beverly, 6'2 guard, 
long, wiry, strong, athletic, gets to the rim, shoots the three. He's the star and the focus is on him and everyone in that team knows that. And that's a large part of Marshall's success is that they all know he's the man. Patrick turned down an offer from the University of Toledo, trying instead to get the recognition he needs his senior year to attract a major Division I school. But halfway through the season, Patrick is still not impressed with any of his offers. It didn't take me long to decide that I would follow Patrick and offer whatever support I could. When I start to think about life after basketball, when I, you know, it actually hit me that I might not play professionally was in 1997. I'm putting all my heart and soul into building a brand, Arthur Ag, Hoop Dreams. In 1997, I decided to walk away from the game of basketball, trying to pursue it to the NBA, because from the first Hoop Dream, where's the reality at to it? You didn't make the NBA, Arthur. That was your goal. That was the dream in that first movie. Where's the hoop reality at now? I love to design. I love to draw. And I never knew that if I put the basketball down, I could take my drawing and my creativity to a whole nother level. And look, on this shirt right here, do you do you see the backboard and the rim and the net toe right there? You ain't even peeped at this. You know, I mean, basketball, it was my number one goal was to get out the neighborhood and I sat back and was creative. I took the name Hoop Dreams and derived it to a slogan that kids can really understand and the slogan is control your destiny. The ball shorts and shit like, that's our basketball shit gonna really be pushed out like somewhere like Foot Lock or Sport Mart, right. you know, and our casual shit where we, you know, where I grew up at, you know, I want the stores up here to have it because it's easier for the West Side right. to get it, you know what I'm saying? So, my whole slogan is to a youth, if you control your destiny, son, you can live your hoop dream. I had Patrick when I was 18 years old. I was, became pregnant at 17. I was a senior in high school. I didn't know what I was having, but the way he was carrying, I was carrying him, he was always kicking and punching and just real active baby inside. His father was a basketball player, and he would always see his father's trophies and say, when I get to be in high school, I'm going to have the double trophies that you have. So it was always a competitive thing with him. I didn't want him to be in the inner city going to school. I figured that he wasn't tough enough. I didn't want him to be bullied. I didn't want him to have to fight every day. And I took him out in the suburbs. He went to grammar school there. And he went to high school for his freshman and sophomore year there. I wouldn't let him play basketball unless he, his grades were a certain point. And he didn't want to really focus on schoolwork. And I was like, you know what, I just got to take a chance. I'm going to move to the city and just pray that he's safe and put him in one of the inner city schools. And it was actually one of the best decisions I made. And he wanted to see if he was good enough to play in the Red West, the division that he was in in high school. It was one of the toughest leagues in Chicago. Everybody go through tough times if they're with their father and their mother. You know what I'm saying? Everybody go through tough times if they're just with their father or if they're just with their mother. I mean, tough times, I mean, if you don't go through that as a kid, I mean, something wrong. I just think, like, you know what I'm saying? Everything happened for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Me growing up without a father happens for a reason. My mother raising me my whole life happened for a reason. I mean, I just look where I am now, you know what I'm saying? She, she, I think she created a, a great young man, you know what I'm saying? It's fortunate to have the basketball skills that he has. Oh, this is a good picture. Yeah, this is a good picture. I'm showing his little collage of stuff. That's his lucky $2 bill he got from one of our friends or the family. And he'll keep stuff. Oh, this is a tribute they did to Luther Bedford. <clears throat> and this is, I guess, he, yeah, he coaches to coach Arthur A.G. It's true, you make a trail everywhere you go. Yeah, what I do? It's hot stuff everywhere. What I do is give him all the facts about every college. And he has to pick out what he thinks is best suitable for him. If it lines up with what he wants, I just make sure I check the roster. I know how many people playing and how many players they got coming in. So I do all the homework and just give it to him to make him look through it so he can pick out what's best. What's wrong, Byro? 
Turn your head around. <laughs> Forwards. <laughs> I don't know, right? He, you know what? He just like to hear me fuss. Find an open spot, man. Yeah, I think I think Coach B. Coach B is. I think he's the reason for all this. If it if it wasn't for him and my mother, I think I wouldn't be in the situation I am now. He's a dude that keep me on point. He's a dude that stayed in my ass just the whole time. Look and focus yourself into the game. He just 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 ride me out. That just makes me a better person because he he knows the potential I have in me. Coach Bryant took over the program after my old coach Luther Bedford retired and became the athletic director. Any team that want to try to take away what we got, they got to come with it. Cause we're gonna play hard basketball. You know, we we may not win it all. But at the end of that game, whoever beat us is going to say it was an award. That's all I want the kids to do is it's, it's a war each and every night. That's where Lamont's different. He, uh, Lamont comes as he is and coaches as he is. That's why Lamont's special. He's not really part of kind of the public league coaching club. He's kind of a loner. Coach Bryan is someone who is very much uh, a strong part of his team and his organization. He really treats his team somewhat like a family. First and foremost is that, you know, the coach's role, you know, you have to assume that Rose as being the father, um, in addition to su the support outside of that family, that you're that father figure to that kid. The father's there, you support that father. If not, the father's not there, you assume that role. <laughs> These kids don't have parents. Man, you know, every little thing they do, I make it big. And I make sure I discipline them. I don't care if they chew a gum too hard. You know, I got to mean, like, you know, when you chew a gum too loud, you know, you hurt my ears. I got to, you know, just keep my foot on their neck. The modern day 21st century coach, basketball coach, should be teaching not just basketball prowess and skills, but also life skills coupled with that. Yeah, when I see you guys cut corners, uh, I got to discipline you. You know, because if I don't discipline you and Jeremy, I'm setting y'all up for failure because it's not all right. It ain't just basketball here. Uh, it's parenting. We do more parenting than basketball. But you know what? It seems like the only person that they respect in this world is me. 13 wins and one loss into the season, the Marshall Commandos face their arch rivals, the Crane Cougars. Red West, all games are rival games. I think uh, the Crane and Marshall is just a little bit special. It's like bragging rights on the west side. Words cannot describe how serious the Marshall-Crane rivalry is. Pack gym to the ceiling. Parking, none. Sign on the door, sold out. Every year, there's a showdown to find out who's on top of the Red West. Crane and Marshall have an ongoing rivalry in terms of football and basketball. We played Crane four times last year. And they beat us three out of the four games. Number one of six. Number one of six. Y'all make me proud. 13 and one, like that's all y'all got left. Nothing else. They didn't peep, please. They just get started. They don't give us no respect. They don't give us no ink. There you go. No nothing. No nothing. You gotta go out there and take your ink. There you go. You gotta take your ink. Put your own ink in the paper. King of the public league. So everybody out here, why they wrote their article? Patrick Beverly and Sharon Collins. Sharon is an interesting case. He uh, He's just been getting better and better. It exploded last year at Nike King. He was in tremendous shape, and all of a sudden, he was being discussed as one of the top point guards in the country. He was sort of the king of the West Side, and he had been for the past you know few years. And now Patrick has risen, challenged him for that role. And Patrick flew under the radar of national recruiting gurus, the scouting services, the websites, because of the shoe companies. If you're not Nike and you don't go to the Nike things, or if you're not affiliated with Reebok or Adidas and you don't go to those camps, you don't go to those big events, these guys aren't gonna find you. Patrick knows he needs to step his game up tonight because his arch rival, Crane star player, and one of the top guards in the country, Sharon Collins, is on the floor.
Crane comes out swinging. But as usual, Patrick is on point, ready to match Sharon play for play. Tempers flare. These West Side boys take their game very seriously. As seniors, they know their careers are on the line. At halftime, Marshall goes into the locker room with their backs against the wall. You start making something happen every time you touch that ball. So that's what stars do. You got that? So I don't give a fuck if five guys come at you, you start doing what I don't give a fuck if you do a dance move or a spin move or whatever fuck kind of move, you can make up a move. You start putting that goddamn ball in the motherfucking basket, man. And quit playing with these folks out here. I don't care if they send two, three guys. Until I tell you you're doing too much, you better start getting to that goddamn basket, man. I'm not gonna talk to you no more. You get to the motherfucking basket. Hell, you need to get there, you get there. Sometimes, a little uplifting speech from the coach is all it takes. Patrick and the rest of the team come out bald. that this Marshall team is known as a second half team. The small lead grows and grows. Soon, we show Crane why Marshall is ranked number one in the city for the first time ever. Patrick ends the game with 33 points. Patrick never mentioned his father much, and I was surprised to find out I used to ball with him back in the day. He had right. never been around. He popped in Patrick's life when I think he was in junior high school. He had been gone for 16 years of Patrick's life. The post-game celebration doesn't last long as members of the Marshall High School family prepare for the funeral of my old coach, Luther Bedford. People from all over the city come to pay their respects to Luther Bedford. When I first met Coach Bedford, I was probably about, about 14, 15 years old. He was a father figure, too, man. More than anybody I wanted to prove something to, it was Mr. Bedford. It was Mr. Bedford. I'm just coming to grips with my dad being gone. And then for this to happen this year, uh, it's just. It's, a, it's just a lot to deal with as a human being sometimes. Yes, I did uh, lose uh, two people that was very close to me. Just recently, 2004, I lost my dad, Arthur G. A. G. Sr. I was one of those guys that boasted about my dad. I was 25, 27 years old, still had a daddy that I can call. Most guys at that age didn't, that I was around. So that was like my backbone. If I knew I ain't had nothing else, there ain't nobody else coming up. Call Bo. He was the foundation of 
My dad was selling clothes, shoes, every, a lot of everything, wholesale. They had a little store up in here. He had just got about two boxes of Air Force Ones in. He get a phone call. And they said, yo, I want to come get something. When they came, it's three of the guys. On December 15th, 2004, my father was brutally murdered in the alley behind my house. You know, you know, probably said whatever, don't you? Motherfuckers move. So my dad just just broke and ran. Pow, one shot. So when he put his hand up like this, <laughs> fell right here, I'll never forget. Blood right here and everything. It was a hit, though. Paid the dude $5,000. They watched my dad for like about two weeks. Drove past the crib out here, followed him and all that. When you had, when you, when you had it in your mind to that, a different way of how he got killed. Like, I thought he got robbed, you know, from everybody just wanting to, you know, get up in the stove. But when you hear, like, he was set up, like, put a hit out on my dad, been in this city, like, forever. Everybody knows him from the west side to the suburbs to the north side to the south side. And this guy didn't know him. Lived on the west side. How you not gonna know Arthur Agee from Hoop Dreams? What's keeping me just 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 doing a crazy ass act like he did, just walking up to his crib where he at and just shooting everybody up in the front. But I got too much to live for for that. I mean, it's just because you done actually took something from me that I can't get back no more, and that shit hurts. That's the negative side. That's the revengeful. That's the devil side of thing, and that's the 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 side that my dad always taught to kiss him on his cheek and walk off. God, God gonna deal with him. The man who killed my father killed a piece of me with him. Raised in a single parent household, Patrick's backbone is his mother, Lisa Beverly. She makes any sacrifice necessary to help Patrick achieve his hoop dream. He likes to get close to his teammates, so it's like a brotherly love, and he would bring players home. And by me going to every game, I noticed that there weren't a lot of uh, family support and not a lot of mothers there. So I kind of took on a role of being everybody's mom, the, the team mom, and you could tell in some of the boys they needed a mother figure. They needed someone there at the games, you know, shouting their name. Just give them support. They need the love and they need the support. Or tell them a good job at the game, give them a hug. A lot of the boys need that. He has been pretty much the same player for the past three years. This year, his shooting became more consistent. So it isn't like he just started this year dropping 40 points on the best teams. He's always had that kind of talent. Uh, most of our good athletes come from, I call them inner city schools, you know, where the standards are not high. And the majority of our student athletes uh, graduate with a 2.0 or, or less. Although known locally, Patrick hasn't attracted the attention of major Division I colleges. But his play this season could change all of that. In the opening round of the city playoffs, Marshall faces Carver Academy, a team they easily defeated during the regular season. This pass ain't going to hurt us. That'll hurt us right there. It's like a championship game. Everybody die for the loose rebounds, loose balls and everything. Everybody cries boys hard. Everybody go hard, all right? Yeah. All right? Yeah. yeah. Go, yeah. Come on. Family on three. One, two, three. Bam! Carver starts the game with something to prove. They hitting buckets at will. Bang! Just adding fuel to Marshall's frustration. Patrick does his best to keep the game close. As the first half winds down, Marshall manages to cut the lead down to five. At halftime, no one in the Marshall locker room panics. Remember, they are the comeback kings. This is the first time I've seen somebody out hustle now. But that's why it's two halves. That was the first half, now it's the second half. Right now, you know, the way we're playing, we're playing like we're second best. We're not about to go. lose this game, Finish yo. your three, Let's man. Let's go. Finish your three. One, two, two, three. three. Patrick does his thing. He and the team chip away at Carver's lead. Marshall's focus and their intensity is what's gotten them this far this season. That focus and drive probably comes a lot from the fact that they weren't expected to be as good as they are.
talking about having to prove themselves, even though we'd all acknowledged how good they were. And I think that's where their motivation and focus come from as a team. Patrick, personally, I think it's the same thing. I mean, Sharon Collins is supposed to be the best guard. Derek Rose is supposed to be the best guard. He's out. It's, it's an underdog motivation. But in the end, <laughs> it's business as usual. Like, like Coach Brian say, you know, uh, hey, hey, we got to keep the ball rolling. You know, so I got to do other things to get into the game, pass and rebound, uh, defense, defense. You know, what I'm saying? it's just, just the whole nine yards. I think um, he really did the right move last summer when he turned down an offer from Toledo and said, I want to open it back up because I think I'm better and good enough to get a major college scholarship. Ain't no services, congregation was gone. When my dad got killed, boom, down here. My mom tried to keep it up, but she couldn't. I mean, it was just, uh, you know, she just couldn't. Imagine her sitting up in there without him, you know, and that's, come on down to see. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm downstairs at the store. Oh, yeah. are you? Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, uh, Jennifer said that it's, I'm supposed to see you? Mm-hmm. We was um, closing on the house this week, but it didn't happen. So the clothes don't happen, I guess, for another two to three weeks. Can we talk out here for a minute? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. I know I ain't paid the rent or nothing like that, so, I mean, it's, it's, you know, they're going to they go through the process of the eviction. It's, it's, it's a process you got to go through. So. Right. Before they even get to the process of <laughs> you ain't setting my shit out on no street, I'm getting it out of here. Patrick practices late the night before the city championship game against Washington. Well, we need a city title! We ain't had one since 91. That's why that man out here in a cold suit like that. Ooh, that's 16. Yeah, they got a yeah. They got, you ought to be out of your damn mind and be out here shooting in the cold. Did you used to do that? Yeah. Uh, we ranked 23. That's tight. Functified. No bounce now, just catch and shoot. You say here you go, coach. Shoot your punch. Like that. <laughs> 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 this shit don't hit nothing but net. Milk the game just like they milk you. Just like they will milk you. You gotta make <laughs> them want you. Though. That's right. Make them want you. Look, don't even don't, don't even worry about it. Let that shit take care of itself. And he'll make all the motherfuckers want him by winning that city and that state. Two shots, two free throws. Yeah, you got five. Win the game. You got five. 
King. Look at their shorts, dog. They had on biker shorts. <laughs> Open it down. Open it down. Then we break in there. Ought to take his eye feet. Look at that nigga's shirt. His hip messed up. Hey, y'all. So y'all went down state. Yeah. That's when, that's when the state tournament was at uh at the University of Illinois. Nigga, I'm sitting, nigga. You know how long as I was sitting there and then? Kendall Gills, fool. That was a Kenny battle, all of them. Nick Anderson. Nick Anderson, all of them, fool. We Urban sitting in they, in, in they locker room, yo. Changing Urban it. Small, all of them guys. Look, man, it's 9 o'clock. You got to get some rest. You got to be hard to be smart, guys. Listen, it's a lot of state for them, but not for us. Let's stay focused. Listen, man. Marshall feels ready. They beat Washington two times so far this season. Washington almost plays to perfection, leaving Marshall struggling. Marshall is caught off guard. type of position before, but not with Coach Bryant. Man, this is a motherfucking embarrassment, man. <laughs> the way y'all out there playing, man, the motherfucker man is jumping. Man, words can't, words can't even describe the shit y'all out there doing. This is not fair to us, man. Why would y'all go out there, man, and play that way, man, with, I mean, just, just gutless, man. I don't mind being down 20, 30, or 40 points if we play hard. Get y'all ass out of here, man. Right, you sick of the fucking game out, man. Come on, y'all I don't know how bad y'all want this game, but I want this game. Let's go. We are not about to lose this motherfucking game. Let's go, y'all. I'm going to beat y'all motherfucking ass, man. If you motherfuckers don't play no ball, I'm talking to all you. Got that? Yeah. Marshall goes into the second half confident. I mean, they are known as the second half kings, but sometimes you can't depend on that. It take both halves to win. You know, because he reached on me as a foul. Because he reached on me as a foul now. OK, I'm just genocide because he reaches out of foul, though. Injury taking Patrick out for the season before he can prove himself could ruin his hoop dream. Hey, let's go. Marshall must accept the fact that it's all over. Even Patrick's 37 points was not enough to bring home the victory. 
Y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. Y'all better be accountable for everything y'all do. Be on out. We ain't finna preach to y'all. We ain't finna do nothing, man. Because I know how you guys feel. You guys don't know how I feel. You motherfuckers show the weakness on, on TV, man. Y'all better start dedicating yourself to this, man. It's not a good feeling. Although in 1991, my team won the city championship, this Marshall team no longer has that opportunity. But they can still qualify for the state tournament by winning the sectional title. As for Patrick, any more losses will result in the season being over, and he may never get the recognition he needs to attract big Division I schools. The reality is most of these guys are not going to play NBA basketball. That's the reality. The fact is, they have no idea that they're not going to play. It's especially now, since guys can't go to the NBA out of high school, it starts in college. Your resume is being built as a high school player. It's being completed as a college player. And if that resume doesn't look pretty good in college, then you're not going to the league. It's outstanding to have a reputation and be a big time high school player and go off to college. but. It's the hard work that's going to take you to the next level. And without that component of the hard work on a daily basis, getting in the gym, getting a sweat on, um, really having someone to help nurture you along, that's what gets you to the next level. If you're a top 100 guy, you're one in three to do it. How are you going to separate yourselves from the other kids is the big question, and it's up to you. Patrick's mother, Lisa, supports them by working at a popular neighborhood nail shop. Can I speak to everybody? Are you acting funny today? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I told you. Uh, how you play. Everybody say the same thing. Team. You know what I'm saying? Girl. They say you kept your composure. Some people are just good and they keep playing, but you have fun with it. With the season coming to an end, Patrick is running out of time to prove himself. Every game counts. Just when they thought Crane was a distant memory, here they are, back for more. Even though the idea of defeating your rival three times in your senior season seems almost impossible, here we go. And that last loss to Washington served notice. It was a wake-up call letting them know that nothing is going to be handed to you, not in life and not in basketball. The ball is in the straw hand. When they get close, you got to jab that wheel, take it away. You ain't got to reach. Just make them uh, change position. I got to see how tough you're going to be on defense. You got to give me some rebounds, man. When they start penetrating, you find the ball. If you have the ball, who wants you to step out of the three, sec three seconds zone? Somebody got to go home tonight. I ain't ready to go on. Somebody got to go. We, we can't play this shit, man, for the next two months. I'm not trying to intimidate you guys or nothing like that, but hey, man, you guys are out there playing. You got to go over here and sit with me and watch the motherfucking game, man. I don't know your father, your mother, your grandmother, your grandfather. We got to we gotta beat everybody out, man. We focus, God. You know, this, this, we're not here to uh, greet other people, but we're here to play a basketball game. If Crane is the only thing standing in our way from going downstate, then they better be prepared for more of the same because we're on a mission. The stakes are simple, win or go home. Just like the last game, Marshall built an early lead. Patrick and Sharon are in rare form both dedicated to carrying their team to victory. You guys play good basketball, man. Right? Yeah. You know, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, everybody makes their runs, that's all. Crane for a third time. 
This fact alone makes this season one of the most memorable in Marshall's history. behind them, the team must now turn their attention to their next opponent, Loyola Academy, led by Jeffrey Jordan, the son of legendary ball player Michael Jordan. Just because he's Michael Jordan's son, that's gonna make me kill him. I want Michael Jordan to hey, adopt me, daddy-o. We won. We just, we win one more game, we go down state. Who dog? Out of here. Got me, got me the yeah, come on. Right, yeah. Some told me to get some fucking gas, man, before I fucking left, man. Today, most kids pursuing the dream of professional sports have nothing to fall back on. I think we've made a big mistake. I think as a society as a whole, we're, we're setting these kids up for failure because there's no real preparation for any success in their adult life if basketball does not pan out. Academic prowess, first and foremost, should be more important than the basketball prowess because you can break a leg, break a, break a neck. Anything can happen to you along the way. And as an athlete, what do you have to fall back on? So I think that uh, we're paying attention as to the catastrophic effect of where uh, these kids' mindsets are as they're preparing themselves for a successful life um, in, their, in, uh, in their future. And hopefully, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm able and I have the opportunity to go to the NBA. I just got to ride it out and see what happens. So whatever happens, but from now on, happens. Everybody's caught up in the dream. Everybody's caught up in the hype. And when, when the smoke clears, it doesn't mean a thing. I mean, this 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 all I got. What else can I do? You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not not I'm not really good at nothing else. So I mean, just what else can I do? I don't have anything else like that. I worked all I worked this hard. My mother couldn't take living in Chicago after my father was murdered, so she moved back home to Alabama. Today she was coming back for the first time since my father's funeral to visit his gravesite. Yeah, just coordinated a uh, time with my mom to go take her to see my dad's grave. She haven't she haven't saw his uh, you know his headstone yet, so I know she'll be happy to see that. Mama, right there. Man, y'all got his birthday wrong. What? How can he be born in 1953 and you're older than me? He's born in '52. Well, Bo, it was raining and cold when we buried you. Yeah, sure was. And it's raining today that I'm here. We miss you, boy. We miss you, Dad. We miss you, man. Think about you every day. I think right now we're the best team in the tournament. You know, uh, again, we had a relapse, but before the relapse, we won 22 straight games. I don't know a lot about uh, <clears throat> Loyola. You know, I'm not trying to say Patrick against uh, uh, Jordan or anything. I'm not trying to compare those uh, two guys. You know, Patrick is, 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 a, is, a, is a team ball player, so he's not going to try to outshine uh, uh, Jordan or anything of that nature, you know. The things that I, I, I like about Patrick, you know, for one thing, he, he knows the honesty of the game. You know, you, Patrick has to go out and give 110, 120% of his self all the time to get the, his teammates to give 100%. Because if they don't see Patrick working 110, 120%, they're only, only going to give us 70, 80%. The efforts that we put in are not in vain. If we can get, you know, out of this group of 10 or 15 kids, if we can get three or four of them in college, that's an excellent job. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
very, very important because everything you guys do from tomorrow to game time can make us or break us. Uh, tomorrow, yeah, what I'm saying, on three teams. One, two, three, team. Team. Yeah. One, two, three, y'all. One, two, three, two, three. Two, three. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 you got that ball in People are, are outside looking in. You know, they don't know the whole story, why I do this or why I do that. I believe getting 110% out of not just one of my kids, but each and every one of my students, it comes from the heart. Uh, I don't, it's not like I'm trying to embarrass them or anything. Um, I think I earned their respect. You know, you got to earn their respect. And I think I earned their respect, whereas I can say or do certain things other coaches probably couldn't do. Uh, we spend a lot of time with each other. Like, like, like again, it's not just basketball. Uh, it's, it's a program. It's a family. See, it's the whole thing that just the pause get political. When Michael Jordan signed hey, playing, balls, right? it wouldn't be like this if, if we was playing Sherrod Collins or somebody else right now. It's real crazy right now. Since they all in the game, everybody here, they ain't rooting for no marshal. Everybody here for Loyola Academy. That's what they is, yo. But we gonna pull it out. We ain't worried about all this right here. Can't get in, can't film this, can't film that. Watch. Watch and see. We gotta dictate this game of basketball, Pat. We can't let them dictate. Dictate me all of the flow. So when you play straight man to man, they dictate the picks and the screen. We just wanna be wild. We wanna be real aggressive and wild. <laughs> No doubt about it, Loyola Academy is what you call a school of privilege. But tonight's game isn't about privilege or pedigree. It's about heart. and his teammates bring it to him hardcore with flawless execution. Patrick helps the team mount a double-digit lead. Division one scout starts to show up as Patrick starts to make a name for himself. Well, 
Viola fights to the end. But when it's all said and done, Tate don't stand a chance. Patrick has his respect now and is considered one of the top players in the country. Having secured a spot in the tournament downstate, Marshall feels like a weight has been lifted off their shoulders. Y'all know what, man? The last time we went downstate, we were shooting hoop dreams. As a parent, I know I want my son to have the dream. The most difficult thing for, for most of the moms and dads that, that I see in the stands is, is trying to look at your son and say, yeah, boy, he's got, a, he's got a chance to play in the NBA. You want to promote the dream, you want to live the dream, and you want it to happen to your child. It just doesn't happen to everybody. As for Patrick, the offers start coming in. You know what? Tyler's has been calling all day. All day? All day. My phone's been... Illinois just text me. Text message me saying congratulations. You know they play Michigan tonight. And Michigan recruit Patrick. Uh, Florida State called me today. The head coach Hamilton. Wake Forest called. Yo, where do you want to major in? Sports. Administration, sports management, sports business, sports law. Who do you think like been on him like not not when he got hot, like, you know, really wanna give him no love. But this was like early in the season. But, oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was actually like with school was on him like early in the season, but still in there. Toledo. Really? Because you know he committed to Toledo. Yeah. They say if you go to Toledo, you'll be a superstar. In the back home. Because it's a small, it's not as big as it's a mid major. It's a mid major. So they say he'll go there and just blow up. Well, that's the thing. But man. if you go to a high major and blow up his... He's with better players, better team. Competition. Why, he, his thing is, why would I go to a mid-major and play at my level? Right. I need to play against the best, somebody that's harder to beat or somebody that's more competition. That makes me better. Right. So, how would you know what you got to do? You say Toledo, cool, but how, how better can I get? Just, mm -hmm. if, I'm the, if I'm coming in the best one in college... Right. <laughs> What does that say? We're all going to come down to his decision. You know what I'm saying? I decided to accept an offer to be a guest speaker at the Olive Harvey College Youth Expo, hosted by Judge Mathis. Sometimes inspiring others inspires me. Real likable story Judge Mathis has, and someone you know, like myself that can look up to and take, take a lot of advice from. So it's an honor for me to be on this panel, you know, of, uh, of prestigious uh, people in the city that's, um, you know, just had some success in their life and just trying to give back to the, to the youth and let them know about um, certain pitfalls that come with your uh, dreams. I was a basketball player that went to college for free on, on, on a basketball scholarship. That's when the clothing exposure started jumping out. Fat Farm, FUBU. This is the new stuff right here that, we're, that the samples I'm waiting on right now coming back from overseas. So once we get this stuff, we good to go. I own the name Who Dreams now. If I want to do anything with that name or anybody else want to license this name from me to do something, they have to come through me and pay me and my foundation. So by me trademarking this name, Who Dreams, and add my slogan that don't know, that don't, too many teachers and don't many professors or philosophers really pushing our kids to control your destiny. I realized I had more going for myself than I thought. It was really time to start focusing on my clothing line.
What's up, KG? What's, What's up, mommy? Yeah. 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 Yeah
Edwardsville goes up early. Edwardsville's lead disappears as we begin to take over. But as the game goes on, we start to turn it on. too much for them to handle. Once again, it's all about heart. <laughs> Scott, there's four quarters of basketball. We want them motherfuckers down. I keep telling you, man, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time, guys. You know what? I believe in y'all. Y'all gotta believe in me. On three teams. Let's, Let's go. Right. Let's go. Right, listen, listen, listen. We're taking one game at a time, all right? We're taking one game at a time. Tomorrow's Saturday, right? Yep. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Saturday on three. One, two, three. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, time to get up. Let's go. Come on. Come on, y'all. Get up. 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 Come on. Get up. Y'all come on. Y'all get stressed, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's get dressed, y'all. Come on. Let's get dressed. Real quick, okay. somebody on the nut in there. The damn dumbass stove wall. The damn, the damn Patrick. That's Patrick. Man, who in the hell is that? Man, you trying to laugh? Man, that's my motherfucker, man. No, that's all that's up. Man. All right, man, I took that. You get up, man? Yeah. Get your ass up, man, quick. led by Derrick Rose, the City Player of the Year, is a team that Marshall beat easily earlier in the season. But that was then, and this is now. The Simeon team is improved and motivated. Or could it be they just simply have more heart? Many scouts are there to see Derek and Patrick. This is one of the biggest games of Patrick's life.
One thing's for sure, the officials are not on our side. Coach Bryant wouldn't allow cameras into the locker room following Marshall's loss, but we were able to speak to two assistant coaches back at the hotel. These kids, man, they worked hard every day. Uh, they stayed focused. You know, we came up short in the state tournament, but we have not come up short in that. We had a tremendous season. Uh, you know, young black kids, you know, they look at the, their heroes on TV as, as basketball players or professional athletes, and, and that shouldn't be. They should look at their heroes as people who, that are positive in the neighborhood. Doing things that are positive so that other little kids can see, you know, you know, hey, he played at Marshall High School. I remember with him, Patrick Beverly, you know, he was an excellent player at Marshall. Now he's out, you know, helping the community. And believe it or not, there are probably over 300,000 collegiate basketball players. Only 1% of that 300,000 make it to the NBA. It should be about education first. Until it comes to be that way, this game of basketball will never be right. Don't let the basketball use you. You use the basketball as a tool to get you an education, a decent education. Okay. There you go, man. Just get your, get, you know, get your, get your, get your, get your diploma and, get, and make sure that you pick a good school. Yeah. You're yep. all right. I started out wanting to be an NBA player. It didn't work out. I ended up becoming a basketball coach. I've had a stellar professional life over the last 20 years in many dis many areas, not just basketball. But it came from me, you know, realizing the importance of an education. The basketball is your means toward helping you to get a degree. Right. You know, it pays for a free education. Your basketball skill problems. That's what that's what God gave you that gift for. And you utilize it to, to then let it uh, take you into getting an education, man. Now, out of the running for first or second place, Marshall was scheduled to play a consolation game for third or fourth place later that same evening. Playing around before the game, Patrick and a teammate get into a fight with each other. It, it wasn't really a scuffle. It's, it's, it's just that the, the kids don't understand the severeness of what we're here for. The kids our kids, you know, they, you know, they, they, their whole life would just play, joking, you know, your, you know, your mama type thing, right. you know. Uh, so the kids don't mean no harm, you know. And then, you know, you start off playing, next thing you know, uh, you push it a little bit too far. The kids don't know when to stop, you know. They don't know when to stop. And then, you know, what? Who's to stop them if, if no adult is around? That's why so much uh, stuff is happening for inner city kids because there's no adults around. Period. Talk to Patrick and Darius. First, for two seconds. Why did y'all start playing period? After the Simeon game, everybody was kind of hated that we lost. So instead of keeping frowns in our faces, we tried to joke around and play with each other. That's that's pain, man. That ain't what y'all doing. Ain't no pain. Pain ain't. I'm, I'm here to somebody. I, I just got a death in the family. So now I'm finna go out me and tell me to start playing. I'm trying to take my mind away from my pain. Taking it away from something that's happening is communication, is talking about it. Hey, it's, it's blowing up to a whole big thing out of nothing. You don't think what y'all just did is nothing? We got third and fourth place. Instead of y'all humbling y'all self and cooling out, playing. 
Så är ju hega svar och en förmögenhet. Coach Bryant benches all the players who were involved in the fight, including Patrick. At this point, Patrick's season is over. Lisa can't believe her son won't be playing the final game of the season. Reserves take advantage of the opportunity and play well enough to keep the game close. Marshall attempts to end the season on a positive note, fighting for third place as if it were the first place position. Marshall is down in the third quarter, and Patrick still hasn't played. Eventually, Patrick is allowed back in the game. Patrick ends the season in style. When it comes to Patrick Beverly, Derrick Rose, and Sherrod Collins, uh, I think all, all three of those guys are going to end up going down in, in history uh, day in and day out. You know, it was a war. Or well, when you talk about high school basketball and high school sports, uh, those three names are going to be talked about uh, for a long time. In his final game, with only 15 minutes playing time, Patrick scores 30 points, and it doesn't go unnoticed. Major Division I offers come rolling in. Marshall captures the third place trophy, just like we did in my senior year. Probably uh, my last year coaching. Uh, Lee, I accomplished a lot of things in three years at, at Marshall. You know, it's a lot of work. People don't realize, man, the, uh, what this basketball means to these kids, man. You know, like after basketball, we went to school on Monday. You know, some of the kids probably gonna disappear. Some of the kids may not come back to school. You know, the only leverage I really, really have is when it's going through basketball team, because one way or another, I gotta, the kids gotta come back to me. These kids need uh, a lot, a lot of uh, support, you know, and uh, I love to keep doing it, Lee, but Man, you know, it's just like me against the world. Y'all don't know, man. Y'all don't. Y'all, you motherfuckers wear me down. Y'all wear me down. Only reason why I don't give up, man, because I want to see y'all be successful. I know it's hard for me to change y'all lives, uh, guys, in one, maybe two years, man, but I just try to lead y'all to the right path, man. I'm telling you, man, y'all don't even understand this inner city shit, man. You know, go to the wrong path, man. Anything can happen. Patrick, your black ass can't go to every party, man. You can't go to every motherfucking party.
Because as soon as somebody see Patrick Beverly, you're going to be trying to fight you. I don't want to hear about no, you know, yeah, we finna go, you know, yeah, my man finna throw us a party. That's what they want, son. Innocent bystanders every motherfucking day, man, is getting shot. This the fucking west side, man. Little girls, man, just in the neighborhood, man, just getting shot. Man, you're a role model, man. You cannot do the same motherfucking thing that everybody else do. I'm a nobody. I touch this little girl right here. There ain't nothing. Now, Patty Bell, we do it. Oh. <laughs> Where the police at? Where the police at? Have them little girls in your room. Setting you up for the yoke dope. That's why I say this thing it ain't about fun. Fun get your ass locked up. They jealous. Man, this whole world is, 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 is jealous. You know, just think of this right here. We even fight among ourselves. You know, let me tell you a story. <laughs> Do you know the whole UIC basketball team that's where I graduated from? Do you know they had like eight guys from the city? Ain't none of them motherfuckers playing basketball no more. All them motherfuckers on the street hustling. Ain't none of them graduated, Patrick Beverly. Not one. Do you know UIC ain't fucking recruiting no more inner city kids? Do you motherfuckers know my dumb ass the first black student athlete to graduate from UIC? I'm in a motherfucking history book. Ain't that a damn shame? Everything I done told you, everything I done told you, man, it happened. I just want you to take time out and reflect back on some of these college guys that went to college, that's locked up. Got to set trouble. Don't let these girls be y'all down for. Once them little girls find your weaknesses, and we all got a weakness, different weaknesses. You do. It's about education, this basketball, and then get you a family together, man. Pat, you got a big chance, man, to go do something, man. With his high school career over, the time arrives for Patrick to make a decision about his future. The two schools in the running are Michigan and Arkansas. Well, I'm quite sure only a few people know that's close to him. Or he probably ain't just kept his mouth shut and not told anybody, so. It's gonna be, it's gonna be real exciting to see what, 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 what's gonna happen. If he's gonna be in the blue and gold, uh, he's gonna be a hawk. Razorback. I kind of think it's going to be Michigan only because it's a Big Ten school, it's in the Midwest, um, Ann Arbor is only about a four or five hour drive from Chicago, so you know some of his ex-teammates and his family can come watch him play. And he probably knows about Michigan, I don't know how much he knows about the Arkansas school. Uh, it, took, it took a long time for me to figure out the city, for me to figure out which coaches are real, which coaches are poor. It was tough for me. I mean, it just it, it was real tough between the two teams. But uh, it came down to you know what where, where does my heart want me to go? And uh, I have chosen to go to uh, University of Arkansas. All right. I would hope that he goes and matures to become to understand the importance of academics and, and, and the student part first. Um, being the athlete, the basketball player, and, and, and the stardom that comes with that is quite different on, on the collegiate level. And then I hope that he can adjust and uh, successfully complete his, 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 his time spent or tenure at, at Arkansas University. It's always just been us two, and we did everything together. And I just felt that he may not have been ready for the world or prepared for what everything had to offer him. But I just had to eventually just let him go and let him see for himself, experience life. After uh, getting rewarded with all the accolades, the freshman of the year, All-American freshman, and I was picked to go like top 20, top 25 in the draft boards after my sophomore year. I mean, after all that, after my freshman year, I kind of, 
I kind of didn't go as hard. I didn't kind of put in as much as work as I did my freshman year to get to where I'm at. And I started to, you know, to, to fall behind. Going into a sophomore year, Patrick was the number one sophomore in the country. I don't think he made the transition uh, academically and with the new coach, you know, getting a new coach. He didn't make that transition. And I tried to get him to understand that, you know, some transitions are, are hard. It shows on and off the court that, you know, you can see he, he was confused. He was very confused. The University of Arkansas has released a statement regarding junior guard Patrick Beverly. Quote, junior guard Patrick Beverly will not compete for the Razorbacks in the 2008-2009 basketball season. The University of Arkansas, including its administrators and coaches, will have no further comment due to student privacy laws in the quote. Beverly averaged 12 points, 6.6 .6 rebounds, and 2.4 assists excuse me, per game in 38 minutes of contest for the Hogs last season. We will pass along any new information as it becomes available. Don't let these girls be y'all down, Father. Let these girls, man, mess with y'all careers and y'all heads, man. You gotta start going to class, man. It's about education, it's basketball, Get your family together, man. That's why I say this, it ain't about fun. Fun, get your ass locked up. I my and Coach Brian relationship in college, it was, it, it kind of faded because I started to grow up and I just started, I decided that uh, I wanted to make decisions on my own, you know, and, and I, I felt like most of the time he was making decisions for me. You know, for me not having a father in my life, and he was that father while, while I was growing up, I felt like I wanted to do things on my own, you know, and um, he had his opinion, I had my opinion, and it, it, it went around a while where, you know, where we didn't talk for several months, like up to like six to seven months. Uh, at one time, Damon, Patrick and I was very, very close. Um, I'm, I'm sure everybody in the world knows that I didn't coach uh, the 2007, 2008 basketball school year at Marshall High School. So I spent a lot of time um, traveling to see Patrick and Dwayne Curtis, two of my elite basketball players. And um, I don't think I have missed them. I don't think I missed a home game. Um, and later, toward the latter ends, we kind of separated a little bit. At the beginning, um, I had his full attention, you know. Um, he couldn't do no wrong, and I couldn't do no wrong. But um, I think he got kind of down on himself because he didn't have the the year that I had expected or anybody had expected, not just me, you know, because we we had we had set his expectation high. Since my freshman year, I've uh, I had two kids. You know, I had a boy. That was my first one. His name is Everett. And I just had a girl September first. Her name was Adlea, and I'm both are located in Arkansas. I, it, it was very hard dealing with both of those. Uh, at first, you know, when you're young, you know, you think everything, you have a plan for everything, and everything's gonna be easy, you know. And it's for some odd reason, never turns out how you expect it to, you know. Uh, but I'm blessed to have both of those, you know, a boy and a girl, and you know that they're the primary reason why I'm playing basketball today. I think that the last. Uh, the last year or two, I did a lot of maturing. I think in, in, in high school, I, um, you know, I don't think I was thinking about it was fun and girls and, you know, my basketball team, you know, that was the only thing I was thinking about. But, you know, when you live and you go through things, you know, I found myself to grow more mature and just look at, look at things a different way and, you know, not so be worried about fun as much and women as much and just trying to, uh, just trying to take care of my own business, basically. I think he cheated himself uh, because, first of all, I always stress education come first. Some situations are not good, and that was not a good situation for him. So I felt that he should have left, you know, and, and just you know moved on and, and and continue his college career, you know, college career. Because you got to realize when you're in college, you're playing against kids your age. You know, when you sign a pro contract, you know, you're dealing with kids. You know, where well, you're not dealing with kids anymore. You're dealing with adults who's very hungry. Through everything that I done went through and going through now, you know, it's, I think that we have grown tighter in the relationship now and, and getting back to where we used to be while I was in high school.
Patrick's college career didn't turn out the way that I had expected. I think he was in a in a in a situation where um, he didn't take it he didn't take it serious. Um, you know, I, I I felt that with all the positive publicity that he was receiving, um, he didn't take a, advantage of the educational part. And that's one thing I taught Patrick was education come first. Uh, in this situation, you know, I just felt that uh, he, he, he got misled uh, some type of way, you know, in, 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 the, in the wrong directions. I was real academically ineligible, and uh, I was suspended a year and couldn't, uh, couldn't play my um, junior season. I'm going to sign with an agent, and uh, from that point on, you know, hopefully I can, you know, do, do something overseas and come back and, you know, have a chance of playing the um, NBA. Him having kids, I was, I was mad. I expected more. I expected him to wait, you know, so he finished and got his career and got his stuff together. But I couldn't be too disappointed I had him at a young age. You know, but I just wasn't ready for him to have kids yet. I just want Patrick to know how proud I am. I've always been proud of him. I always be supportive of anything he does, and I'm gonna always be here for him. No matter what decisions he makes, if NBA isn't the way to go, whatever he decides to do, I'm gonna be here, and I'm proud of how life has turned out. Even through the ups and downs, I'm still proud of him. Many players in the past who have made choices like Patrick were not successful in making it. Hopefully, with Patrick being on the radar of many NBA scouting reports, he has a chance. Second round. The Los Angeles Lakers took Patrick Beverly. 